Are you fascinated by the paranormal and want to hear about encounters that have happened to real life people in real life places? Do you need a drink to calm those nerves after hearing some scary stories? You're listening to Booze and Bourbon. Well, we invite you to grab a drink, whether it's a coffee or something with a little bit more spirit in it. Grab a blanket, snuggle in, because I'm Kim and that's Jen, and we're Booze and Bourbon. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Booze and Bourbon. Hi, Australian Jen. How are you? Um, I'm, you know, I'm pretty good over here. I can't do it. I'm just, I really try and then I lose it every time. So it's okay. I like your effort. I like it a lot. Yes. Welcome to episode 54, guys. It's uh, been quite a few episodes that we've recorded. Yes. Pretty excited about being here and recording this new episode with you. Yeah. Today, we are doing an episode in which I find extremely fascinating, which is all about the ghosts of Rosalind Chapel, which is reported to have been built by Knights Templar. And has a little Scottish background, (laughs) right? Yeah, it certainly does. (laughs) So how have you been, Jen? Well, you know, I'm just uh, living the dream, living the dream. That's good. I did have to deal with a shitty, pukey dog for the last couple of days. But other than that, it's not bad. Yeah, I have been there. And I can honestly say it's not much fun at all. No. I remember the one time that I had your incident happening where there was poop and barf everywhere. Mm -hmm. I had finished cleaning up about 14 piles of puke and poop. (laughs) And I put my feet up on the sofa just to relax because I was like, that was not cool. So I poured myself a glass of wine. And then my dog comes over to me on the sofa and he just kind of like was like, hmm. I'm like, oh, were you hungry, bud? So I went and fed him. Stupid. And then you puked again? <laughs> yeah, puked mm-hmm. everywhere all over again. Well, it felt like it was like one of those like CSI episodes because when I looked at his puke, there was like bone fragments mm-hmm. from the lovely bone that he ate. So yeah, it was uh, it was great. Just some bones and some food. Not much fun. No. What I can tell you is fun, though. We've got a little pre-gaming going on. With we do. Not bourbon, but gin. Yes. It's very interesting to lead up to uh, the bourbon with the gin, but... I know. Well, we're going to do it. I'm very excited about what we have today as well. (laughs) Me too. But I'm containing myself for now. Well, I believe... Now, I'd have to go back and look, but I believe that the last time we did an episode about a church, we did Angels Envy Bourbon. Mm -hmm. We're doing an episode about a church. We're doing Angels Envy Finished Rye. Yes. This is a little Christmas present brought to me from Florida when my husband was there for work. So I'm very excited to share this with you. Thank you, husband, for your trip. When's the last time you had this? Uh, Last year. Well, I mean, that's not saying much since it's only a weekend, but Mm -hmm. in May. At Bourbon's Beast. Yes. Yeah, and I haven't been able to get my mind off of it. So, well, here we are. Here we are. So, Jen, do you want to do a lovely cork pop for us? Absolutely. And for our lovely listeners. Wow. Wow. That had a good little echo to it. Yeah, it did. The whiskey is Angel's Envy Rye. And you know why they call it Angel's Envy, right? Because I'm very envious of the angels. No. No, I'm sorry. So if you're familiar (laughs) with the term angel's share... That's often described in the whiskey industry. Here's my best description of it. So while the whiskey ages, there's obviously a lot of evaporation that happens during the years that it's aging. Therefore, in some of the older aged whiskey barrels, there may only be 30 some percent of the whiskey left in the barrel by the time it's ready to be bottled. This evaporated whiskey is called angel share. And in this whiskey's case, the angels are envious of what's left in the barrel that they didn't get. Me too. So Angel's Envy Rye starts its life as a very good whiskey, yet it has a traditional mash bill mix of 95% rye and 5% malted barley. A lot of the other American rye makers use this mix just because it works well. Where Angel's Envy Rye differs is the fact that they age it a full six years in a medium char American oak barrel, and then they finish it for an additional 18 months in rum casks, but not just any rum casks. Mm. Mm Mm-mm. These are the rum casks from Plantation Rum, mm-hmm. the same ones that started as cognac casks from Maison Ferrand. When we finally get our hands on this bottle, it's actually aged seven and a half years. Jen, smell it. Besides all of the deliciousness, mm-hmm. I do get 
the maple sugar. Oh, yeah. Molasses cookies, which happens to be one of my faves. Do you get gingerbread? I do a little bit, yeah. Like gingy. Definitely some ginger in there. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of baking spices, but it just definitely smells like dessert. So it is delicious. Delicious. Can we taste it now? Go for it. That just brought so much joy and excitement to my insides. <laughs> I can't even explain it. It's so a combination what? of how much I love a, a good little rye finish in there mm-hmm. and Angel's Envy period. Just like the nose, you get a lot of that sweetness from the rum casks. But I also don't feel like this dominates the rye. Because there's been other ones that we've had, like the Basil Hayden's rye with the Caribbean rum finish. That's really sweet. And you can definitely get like a lot of molasses from it. Yeah. But this one still gets some decent, delicious rye. So I find it super easy to sip. Very. Dangerously easy to sip. Yes. What do you think about the finish? You're probably going to have to try some more. I mean, you might as well. I guess it would be more of the syrup, like caramel syrup, spicy. Mm Mm-hmm pow at the end love this so much it's probably one of my favorite things to sip on in the whole wide world so jen now that we have some warm rye pockets yes it's time for a little game okay would you rather would you rather now of course this is going to be in a scary setting not in a pleasant setting Mm -hmm. but spend the night in a very deserted chapel Okay. Preferably in the middle of the woods. Mm-hmm. Or spend a night in our fave chapel that we're going to talk about today. So you have a deserted chapel in the middle of the woods somewhere. Destination unknown. Um, I think I'd probably go with Rosalind Chapel for one reason and really one reason only. It's because I wouldn't feel like I would be there completely all by myself because knowing there would be tourists coming in the morning. I suppose, yeah. I would have at least some form of a visitor, so. True. True. But it's a creepy spot and we're going to get into that Mm -hmm. and this leads into my would you rather question. Okay, go for it. Would you rather be a knight that's buried in the basement of the Rosalind Chapel? Uh Uh-huh. With concrete poured over you, or be the knight that doesn't have any armor and is just like laying there, like out for inspection. Because they did that until like the 1700s. Yeah. See, I got this weird thing with like, I'm not even claustrophobic. I just don't, being buried alive or being put in stone afterwards and, and in stone, concrete, whatever. Just not my thing. I'd rather, I guess I would just be, you know, full entertainment mode and just be on display. <laughs> really? Your decaying body? Yeah, just sure. Why not? <laughs> just okay. Take a gander, everyone. Poke, poke. Yeah. All right. I like it. Okay. Well, guys, we are going to be right back just after this little break to get into the creepy stories around Roslyn Chapel. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I just want to drink this whole bottle of Angel's Envy. Would it be wrong or would Ryan be a little upset if it just disappeared? How can it be so wrong when it's so right? Oh, that's a very true statement, Kim. (laughs) Very true. I mean, there was a Mm. note on it saying, to Kim, love Ryan. Oh, well, I mean... Then we're fine. Tomorrow might be a snow day, too. Exactly. So (laughs) we either drink it now and you have to deal with it all day tomorrow when you get in trouble and you're stuck in the house with them, or we (laughs) save some for them and then it's not as bad. We'll save them a drip. You want to remember what it tasted like? Here you go. All right. So, guys, as we mentioned to you before, we're going to get into some pretty crazy stories about Rosalind Chapel. First, we're going to get into some history on the building with its historic and mystical connections to the Knights Templar, as well as its ancient majestic beauty, it comes as little surprise that Dan Brown chose Roslyn Chapel as the setting for so much activity in his multi-million bestseller, The Da Vinci Code. I hope you guys have heard of that. 
Who were the Knights Templar, you ask? Well, the Knights Templar are known for their prowess in battle and finances. They were a Christian military order that played an integral part in the early Crusades. However, in 1307, rumors about the order's secret rituals spread, which led to their eventual downfall. Really, I think a king was just jealous of the fact that they had so much money and he probably owed them a lot of money. So he was like off with their heads. So they were tried for treason and many of them were sentenced to death. This left the knights disbanded, although it is rumored that many of them escaped and reformed in Portugal and Spain. The knights, who were very powerful and mystical, seem to have some strange rituals and beliefs follow them. Some believe that the knights often carried a severed head with them and that head belonged to John the Baptist. Rosalind Chapel and its connection to the Strange Knights Templar made for a perfect location for a book and then a movie. It seemed that Rosalind was authentic, ready, and waiting. Tom Hanks described it as all one could imagine or hope for. One thing to note here, though, is that apparently according to court documents, which I found on the internet, it was said that Dan Brown was interested in choosing the mysterious New Ross Castle as the location for his books. The town of New Ross, which is really close to where we actually record, he felt that it wasn't able to sustain the influx of tourism. And since there isn't really a building actually standing there anymore, there'd be not much for tourists to really see. And the Mm -hmm. property is now a private property. So New Ross is a small town in Nova Scotia, about 15 minutes away. Back in the 70s, a professor living in New Ross noticed that there was a foundation of ruins in her backyard, along with the ancient well, which has Masonic symbols carved inside of it. This well was inspected closely by Freemason and Oak Island diver Tony Sampson. Tony. He has verified that there are Masonic symbols on the inside. Some speculate that this building was built by the Knights Templar and Henry Sinclair, while others believe it was built for William Alexander, a Scottish baronet sent to Nova Scotia in the 1600s. Back to Roslyn Chapel. It is far more than a mere movie set and is home to a variety of active spirits. It stands in the village of Roslyn, just outside Edinburgh, Scotland, and was built around 500 years ago. Roslyn was the home of the Sinclair Earls of Orkney, who lived like royalty in Roslyn Castle from the 12th or 13th century. They fought for Robert the Bruce at Bannockburn in 1314, and Sir William Sinclair was probably one of the Knights Crusaders. The chapel was founded in 1446 by another William Sinclair. Earl of Orkney, although building did not commence until a few years later. It was originally intended to be a collegiate chapel. The chapel is known for its mysterious and intricate carvings that have stumped historians for generations. They reflect biblical, Masonic, pagan, and Knights Templar themes. Some of these carvings are out of time and place. They were carved in the chapel 200 years before Columbus discovered America. They depict items only found in the New World, American cactus and Indian sweet corn. The Haunting Origins and Legends of the Chapel The crypt is rumored to house the Holy Grail, which was the chalice used by Christ at the Last Supper. The Grail is thought to have been brought back by the Knights Templar from ransacking Solomon's temple, and they secretly kept it there in the crypt. Even more fantastic legends have it that the original crown jewels of Scotland, along with Christ's mummified head, are also stored there, along with the entire treasure collected by the Knights Templar and the True Cross. Beneath the crypt lies the burial chamber where 10 former earls of Roslyn are alleged to have been laid out in their armor, but without coffins until about the 1700s. Yeah, that's going to be you. (laughs) I like to be on display. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, decaying. Seems like an eerie spot. So it makes sense why a number of spirits are said to haunt the chapel walls and the surrounding area. And people with no prior knowledge of these stories have reported seeing and hearing strange apparitions and unexplained sounds. As with so many haunted locations, Roslyn Chapel has its white lady, and she has appeared to startled. Sh- oh God! And she has appeared to startled visitors a number of times over the years. She is reputed to guard treasure hidden in the castle. Tradition has it that if you can find the right step to stand on and blow a trumpet, you might wake her, and then you may, may be rewarded with that which she protects. Maybe you could give it a try. (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) I mean, a tourist with a trumpet stepping on every step to test it out makes you sound like a normal tourist, right? Yeah, no, I think I'll go there without trumpet. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) If you explore the area by foot, you may encounter a medieval knight in black armor riding a horse hundreds of years after he was killed in battle, probably around 1303. Other stories tell of ghostly flames, which could be seen whenever a Sinclair was on the point of death 
not just a little flame in the corner of the chapel, but instead the whole chapel appears to be in flames. That's crazy. I wonder if that still happens because I'm sure there's like still Sinclairs around that have that original bloodline. The chapel also plays host to the spirit of an apprentice who carved the apprentice pillar. The legend states an apprentice who was once a stonemason was gruesomely murdered in the chapel. This young man is said to have carved a ridiculously ornate, beautiful pillar while his master was away in Rome looking for inspiration for this pillar's decoration. When his master returned, he found his apprentice had actually surpassed his own skill. So in a jealous rage, he then killed the apprentice by bludgeoning him. I mean, that seems totally normal. You just have a little jealous rage and, you know. Right. Yeah. On dark and stormy nights, so it is said, a blood-curdling sound can be heard in the woodlands around Rosslyn Castle. According to folklore, it comes from a phantom dog, the ghost of a warhound which belonged to an English knight. In 1302, there was a fierce battle in Rosslyn Glen between Scottish and English forces. When a Scotsman killed the English knight, the dog was set upon him and he was forced to slay the dog. But that wasn't the end of the story. Every night from then onwards, the ghost of the dog would appear in the guard room, also on the grounds of Roslyn Chapel, around the Roslyn Castle, terrifying the soldiers who were garrisoned there. One night, the man who had slain the dog was on watch duty. He let out a terrified scream when he saw the ghostly dog apparition and died three days later. After that, the ghostly visits ceased, but the dog's howling can occasionally still be heard on the grounds. Are you sure it's not your dog having a massive diarrhea fit? Uh, you know, (laughs) it's very possible. It's very possible. Oh, God. As for the ghosts of Knights Templar, it would seem they are on internal guard. As for the ghosts of the Knights Templar, it would seem they are on eternal guard, protecting some secret source of knowledge hidden deep within the chapel. In addition to the ornate apprentice pillar, it contains other mysterious and beautiful carvings, charismatic enough to convince some people that they conceal a wonderful message. Certainly, the symbols depicted here are an eclectic collection, Egyptian, Celtic, Islamic, pagan, and they even include carvings of little green men, and more so than any other location known today. The carvings continue to intrigue and engage the minds of architectural scholars from generation to generation. There have been numerous sightings of phantom monks in around the chapel. One curator witnessed a ghostly monk praying at an altar in the crypt. This monk was seen surrounded by four guardian knights. In other sightings, witnesses have come forward to state they saw monks dressed in gray or black, both inside and outside the chapel at night. Other curators have reported hearing strange sounds when there is no one around. Interesting. A group of actors rehearsing for a play in the chapel back in 2006 had one cast member claim to see a strange fairy-like entity roaming the grounds, and another actor stated that he saw a ghostly figure in the chapel. I would like to say that I was the fairy-like entity. Uh, Yeah, I know. Tinkerbell, is that you? Tink. The year before, another actor rehearsing a play inside the chapel had heard a child's voice in the crypt. He shouted down, I'm locking up. However, when he went down, there was no one there. Interesting. More recently, odd lights have been witnessed in the chapel as well, which is interesting because when we covered the Oak Island episode, the very first people that ever discovered Oak Island discovered it because of odd lights. Yes. Maybe there's a Templar connection. Yeah. Maybe if you're a knight, you come back as a strange light. Or you just feel like you're the light of the night. Mm. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm so trying, I was just trying to be really cool there. I'm trying and it just not to the same. spit up my rye. Yeah, so that basically sums up Roslyn Chapel. I know I want to go. Me too. I would like to go to Scotland and Ireland with you. Oh my gosh, that would be uber exciting. Wouldn't that be great? We definitely need to do that. We could go hang out in some camps. We have tour guides in Ireland, so we'd be we'd be totally fine. Yeah. yeah. And those castles are doozies. They really are. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But I'm just so fascinated with everything to do with Rosalind Chapel and everything to do with Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. And it's been brought to my attention because of the connection to Oak Island. Because what we just told you in this story, it says that, you know, maybe all of the Knights Templar jewels and artifacts and belongings are buried at Rosalind Castle or Rosalind Chapel, I should say. Mm -hmm. But also many people believe that all of those are buried on Oak Island. Right. Only time will tell. But yeah, I'd kind of like to go there and uh, get out my trumpet. I, I prefer the air trumpet, uh, but I would also like to meet my shining knight. 
He might be dead. That's fine. I'm also probably going to be decaying on the ground somewhere. So <laughs> perfect. Love at first fright. You exactly. Know? There's some pretty cool things that we do over on the Patreon page. We do some funny videos that sort of capture the bourbon that we're drinking and the topic for the show. And that comes out before the show actually comes out on Fridays. So that's always fun. And Jen usually has her uh, famous ex-bartender recipes on there as well, monthly. I like that we say the ex-bartender. I'm and, a very retired bartender. So Jen, if people want to find us on social media, where can they find us? We are Insta-famous, so you can find us on Instagram, uh, Booze and Bourbon. You can also find us on Facebook, Booze and Bourbon, the podcast. Uh, we are also on Twitter. Yeah, we Stitcher, are. Stitcher, anything that YouTube. you can possibly listen to podcasts on, we are on it. So make sure you go and hit subscribe on YouTube. And we will catch you guys for an all new round of Would You Rather and an all new round of Ghost Stories next Friday. Thanks, guys. Peace out. Booze and Bourbon is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to advertise on the show, please head over to abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.